Okay, so uh, hi, my name is uh, Michał Brzezicki and uh, I'm a uh, like technical founder of the startup Senti1 that uh, analyzes and uh, monitors what uh, people are saying on the internet. So uh, before I get to the point about uh, the technical stuff that will, will we challenge like each day, uh, a little bit of uh, introduction about what we do. So uh, Senti1 is like a powerful uh, monitoring and analysis tool that uh, enables uh, whole teams and enterprises to actually know what people are saying on the internet and uh, manage their online reputation. So, uh, so you can actually, you know, read what people are saying and engage into the conversation. Uh, so, and we do it in uh, over 23 languages, so uh, basically we cover actually 26 uh, countries actually. And uh, we don't only focus, for example, on Facebook and Twitter, on, you know, like on major social media platforms, but we uh, also like, provide the monitoring solution for, uh, that uh, you, uh, monitors, for example, local newspapers, uh, review sites, and uh, like blogs and actually uh, like thousands of domains actually that uh, are interesting and where user actually post uh, uh, comments or like uh, write some uh, blog posts for example. And uh, but beyond that, uh, Senti1 is not only just a tool. We also like offer our customers like tailored reporting, so uh, we can handcraft uh, like uh, because we have like team for. Uh, uh, like professional data analysts uh, who can actually analyze the data that we have and provide you with a tailored report that uh, gives you like uh, insights into to your brand or for example what's happening on the market or what your competitors are doing and we also uh, uh, can spin out the influencers and uh, uh, estimate the, the reach uh, some posts get because uh, in social media it's like often happens that uh, there's like single posts that actually you know uh, have tremendous coverage so uh, we also handle these situations where there are like viral posts or viral memes. Okay, so and uh, this is like uh, the screenshot uh, from uh, our application. So actually, you can see that you can uh, you can analyze the data and actually compare it beyond uh, between the markets. So uh, uh, if you're like uh, a big company, for example, that has like uh, a lot of products in different markets, you, you really want to know how you know uh, they actually. You know, how they are actually perceived in uh, in different countries. So uh, uh, we, we, it can be done actually with uh, quite easily with uh, our tool, uh, and on top of that, we we have a social CRM when you can uh, actually uh, reply directly from the tool, and uh, uh, it is useful uh, when you have like a case of a team that manages online reputation when they have a lot of social media channels they actually have to respond to. So uh, it's not only about uh, actually replying, but it's also about measuring uh, the time and uh, assigning uh, the, the dimensions to different teams and so on. So it's like a, co a complete actually workflow for uh, for PR companies or uh, call centers or any company that has uh, a lot of issues uh, in the social media. Okay, and here are just uh, some of our customers. Uh, because we, we started this company six years ago and we, till then, uh, worked with over 500 brands uh, directly or indirectly through, through, through agencies which we cooperate with. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's something that we are really proud of, like uh, the customers that we actually had a like, uh, chance to work with, or are still working in most cases. Okay, so uh, here's the more like uh, more technological part. Uh, so basically, uh, since we are a startup, we we like you know to use uh, open source technologies, uh, you know, just not to spend too much money. So actually, we. Uh, we focus, uh, we put our core features and core uh, uh, solutions on uh, open source technologies like uh, Elasticsearch, Cassandra, uh, Apache HBase, or Percona cluster. But uh, that's not all. Like, uh, we, we, uh, 
because we also use uh, a lot of technologies that you know uh, allow us to automate all this process. So because we use, you know, really have the system is deployed on 200 servers, so it really has to be monitored, automated, and uh, you know, streamlined uh, so that uh, we can actually manage it. So apart from that, we also use uh, a lot of other tools. And if you, I will today I will just talk uh, about uh, mainly about Elasticsearch, uh, since it's, uh, like we have a lot of experience with that. But if you, you know use any of those tools and have some you know questions or issues concerning that, you can uh, find me later and you can share some experiences on that because uh, actually none of them uh, is perfect. Okay, so uh, here is uh, like the brief concept of what we do and like uh, how the actual architecture actually looks. Uh, it is deployed on 200 uh, servers and it's, uh, in general it's uh, a bit complicated by the core concept of, uh, of the architecture. Actually, architecture is actually quite simple. So uh, we have our own uh, crawling network which uh, gathers the data from World Wide Web and uh, various uh, APIs and social media. Uh, then we have like intermediate layer for analysis where we do all the NLP magic and uh, classifications. We put it in the database, uh, uh, which is actually quite huge because right now it has uh, 17 billion uh, mentions. And uh, this database is, uh, can be queried uh, uh, with online web application that uh, uh, use, uh, is facing, the users are using each day. Okay, so uh, today I'll be focused on uh, this part about uh, crawling and gathering data and also about storing it. So actually, uh, when you want to put, create your own uh, scrapping network, uh, you may face uh, a lot of challenges actually because it's uh, uh, a bit complicated and actually apart from like major uh, web search companies like Google, Yandex, Baidu, right? Uh, uh, not a lot of companies or startups actually do that. So uh, it's kind of like a pretty niche right now. So like the first problem is like how to extract the data because we have millions of domains and uh, on each of the domain we have like different content and each of this content is presented in HTML and everything is different, it's like very chaotic. So, uh, and only uh, moreover, well, uh, there is no like one single uh, like database of uh, domains that are public on the internet. So uh, you really have to you know, look for, the, uh, for them on your own and uh, the more, uh, uh, another challenge is that actually uh, for, for us only like a small portion actually of the data uh, that is on the internet is useful because we are only you can, you, you looking for uh, user generated texts so we actually want to you know, monitor the internet but actually get the data only like I don't know one percent percent of it or, or even less so we developed like an algorithm for that does uh, generic extraction because uh, uh, most of the sites use uh, templates, patterns, so we can you know, make some assumptions on uh, how it looks and uh, try to guess that uh, where the content is on the website. So uh, this algorithm works actually quite, uh, quite nice. It's not uh, perfect because, well, uh, the data in, in general in the internet is very uh, chaotic, so it's it doesn't ca it cannot actually cover like all the cases, but we 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 want to like it's an optimization problem, so we want to you know cover as most cases as uh, as possible. So for example, we look for like finding repetitive patterns. Uh, we find, look check if they're like uh, the content is different, so it means that that may be some discussion. We look for dates inside uh, the content, so because uh, each mention has to be time tagged. Uh, yeah, and we also like, for example, look for uh, articles because they also have some features that uh, uh, allow us to actually extract uh, only the content of the article from the website. Uh, the problem here is that it's uh, a bit heavy on U CPU, so it's uh, like a bit uh, flaw. And uh, actually, when we developed the system, you know, we uh, we thought that it would be easier to, for example, extract dates out of uh, out of the text. But actually, they're like 
over 500 uh, date formats, and people use like really weird uh, uh, formats to <laughs> present the data, and uh, and they often make some errors. They combine like, for example, uh, Hungarian and English notation, and uh, in each country you have like different order of the uh, in dates, so. Uh, it's actually not that easy to, to extract the date uh, out of the text. Yeah, and sometimes it's uh, like human readable uh, relative date, something like that. So, uh, yeah, and the thing like uh, for the cases where we cannot actually cover with uh, the automatic algorithm, we can use like XPath profiles. So, like just manually say to the computer like where exactly the content is on the website. Uh, it's, it works nice because it's fast and because it just requires XPath uh, parsing, but uh, it uh, has to be done uh, manually. So we decided you now we can actually, using the first algorithm, create uh, XPath profiles that uh, actually uh, allow us to, uh, uh, to, 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 to create uh, them uh, automatically. Uh, and later been to be used uh, in the system. However, this uh, also is not perfect, so we had to use like a neural network that actually accepts or rejects if we uh, created uh, like a correct uh, profile for uh, for web scrapping. Yeah, and uh, in terms of like uh, the whole crawler, uh, in general, it is like very difficult to define what is the crawler strategy uh, because we. We, in general, want to go to the sites that uh, have some fresh content. We don't want to, you know, crawl the sites where there are some old post threads or there is, like, no content at all. And uh, we want to, you know, minimize the, uh, like, for example, if there is, uh, like, some viral article on the Internet where there are people, like, posting comments like crazy. So we want to, you know, for example, to uh, monitor this uh, exact article as uh, as quick as possible, so that we uh, we know uh, what's uh, what's going on. So we have like those uh, matrices that we always want to uh, improve in our uh, uh, in our system. So we want to you know uh, make the uh, crawling network as fast as possible. So we want to minimize the time between something is published actually on the website and uh, the time we we know uh, it was published. And we also, since we are also like a data research company, we want to maximize actually the data that we have in our system. So, uh, And we also want to uh, reduce the number of hits because the crawler would just, it works uh, like that, that it just goes to the, uh, on the inter uh, it just crawls on the internet, so uh, it actually generates some traffic, and it's, uh, uh, if we you know, waste those uh, website hits on the content that we don't actually want, it's uh, just a waste of money. So the problem is that uh, uh, internet is quite huge, so it's uh, problematic to actually, uh, you create a queue for a crawler that would be uh, like optimal because it doesn't actually fit uh, into the uh, memory because uh, when you have uh, uh, like uh, like uh, the, the perfect crawler would know uh, it would have like the perfect knowledge about the website so it's like like full graph on about the links but actually uh, those graphs are really enormous so we have to keep uh, keep the uh, uh, not the full graph structure, but only some data that is useful for us. Therefore, we can actually uh, create uh, this queue. And uh, we have like two approaches. One is when this queue is inside the memory, and uh, because it uh, grows actually, so it has to be like restarted uh, like in a few days. And we have like another solution which uses uh, HBase, because uh, where we have unsorted list of URLs. And then uh, we run uh, Spark jobs that uh, actually uh, tell the crawlers what actually they should do right now. So, uh, so yeah, we have some information about uh, uh, about the, the the website. And actually, here is like the, the the key challenge is like the return function. So, where when actually we have to go back to this page uh, in the future after we crawled it. So we have like some. Uh, factors that we need to uh, 
to, to, to check and uh, later on uh, just decide uh, which uh, uh, when exactly we want to go back to this uh, to this page and it's like a uh, major optimization challenge actually so when you have your own credit network it's just a never ending story of issues and problems because the data itself is uh, so huge and there's a lot of chaos uh, on the internet in terms of structure what people are actually doing there and and so on so so like for example problematic if uh, for uh, extracting networks is uh, uh, sites with uh, dynamic content so for example now there's popular those uh, uh, those single uh, page uh, websites uh, but actually if you want to uh, run JavaScript inside the uh, internet robot it's like a huge performance hit actually so what we do is we don't actually render the whole JavaScript inside the uh, on the website but we try to load uh, only like this uh, comment section actually which is uh, like useful for us since we don't want to render all other uh, like graphical things and so on yeah and it's like actually the the problem is uh, with testing and evaluating what you do so uh, basically uh, when you make some changes to the algorithm you change the strategy you actually never fully know if what we have done is uh, uh, is beneficial or not because you can uh, mm, because we, for example, we have a like simulation environment where we can check uh, how the system is performing. Uh, it's like uh, the simulation environment use some historical data that we uh, that we have. But uh, uh, even though you make such uh, such environment, you never actually know if you uh, you made some changes for the good or for the bad. So you actually really have to monitor everything uh, that you do. So later on in production, you will know that uh, just uh, the performance has dropped or it has increased. Yeah, so there's some like uh, always problems, like for example, gen generated traffic. You actually never know if the, when you like look for new websites, if it's uh, big or small and how much you can actually uh, actually crawl it because like for example if you have a uh, major newspaper site you can actually crawl it and uh, make a lot of hits since it's like an enormous website but if you have some for example small blog you don't actually want to kill uh, this website because if you uh, are too aggressive then you can uh, actually get banned or uh, or you may I don't know put down the website so uh, so you have really really cautious about uh, how you actually uh, make those hits uh, on the internet yeah and there's uh, like since the data is chaotic so it's often case that uh, the data for example html is uh, malformed on the website so it cannot be for example parsed by by, by our system yeah and this uh, uh, this project that will uh, the, the whole those challenges uh, concerning, for example, networks, uh, concerning uh, uh, web scrappers and, and so on is uh, partly funded by uh, Polish uh, National Center for Research and Development. So uh, it's a thing that we are doing right now and uh, uh, trying to solve uh, those issues and uh, develop the R&D. Okay, so uh, the next part is about the data cluster that we use. So here are some uh, tech specs uh, of what uh, what we have. Uh, actually, people don't often share this data uh, on how big their clusters is and so on, uh, because uh, well, you actually I don't know why they don't share it. But uh, we have uh, quite a big Elasticsearch uh, cluster. So. From what I know, it can be bigger because I was talking always when I meet somebody who is like has some experience in Elasticsearch. Uh, I know there are some bigger clusters uh, out there, so uh, it actually quite uh, performs quite well right now, and uh, it has uh, 33 terabyte, uh, terabytes uh, of data that is uh, spread it across uh, 54 uh, actual servers. And uh, the load that we, it is quite uh, under heavy load because uh, uh, we constantly write to it. So uh, actually, like 75% of the document inserts 
uh, into the database are duplicates, so uh, so the, the, the elastic search is handles the situation pretty well, and uh, we can add. Uh, I don't know how much actually we can add each day, but uh, uh, in practice we 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 seen that we can add, for example, like 45 million new documents uh, into the database, and. Uh, uh, this, uh, mm, each of the nodes is, uh, uses uh, uh, SSD disks, which is actually quite important, uh, since uh, the Lucene engine that is behind Elasticsearch, uh, uh, it is advised to use uh, SSD uh, disks. However, we do not, uh, do not put it in the uh, RAID matrix with uh, replication, because uh, Elastic itself has uh, on redundancy on a software level, so there's no need uh, to actually uh, take care of the disks uh, on such low level because, uh, the, uh, because the cluster itself handles uh, such situations. Uh, yeah, and actually there is uh, no need to, to use uh, more uh, memory for, for the server because it, has, uh, it uses the uh, pointer compression, so uh, it's actually Mm, but this point of compression only works uh, below like 31 gigabytes of data. So, and you have to put uh, like, uh, uh, you, you have to keep like half of the memory free for the system cache, for the file system cache. So it actually doesn't make sense to uh, have uh, servers with more memory. What's important is that we scale up uh, this, uh, this cluster by adding new nodes. So uh, it really, uh, can handle such situations when uh, just by adding new nodes, it uh, uh, it's just like almost linear uh, performance uh, increase. Yeah, but there are like, some many issues that <laughs> comes along with uh, this uh, this technology. Is first of all is that it's like very very fragile to uh, network issues. So for example, if you have cluster with uh, 50 nodes. Uh, like the performance of the whole cluster can actually significantly drop if there is like connectivity, some connectivity issues between uh, two nodes uh, inside the cluster. And uh, the thing is that you, when you have such issues, you cannot actually easily point out which two nodes have problem with uh, connectivity. So uh, it can be like really serious issue uh, if you put it in the like unsafe network that, uh, that is like un unreliable. And uh, if you don't configure it uh, properly, you can have the situation of the split brain. So the whole data actually splits into two. So it's a like, very dangerous situation uh, that you can achieve, but uh, it may happen and it may uh, maybe not uh, have some, I don't know, serious data loss. But uh, when the server is running and you have data, uh, like two clusters inside, uh, it's a bit problematic. And uh, when you update or uh, you have to often re-index the data, so it's actually copying from one index to another and it takes a lot of time. And also uh, when you like running the server, it also like after time, it's also a problem because uh, it's, uh, you cannot actually update the schema, like for example in MySQL, because it also requires re-indexing. So everything you do actually that is more serious on, uh, on the, with the data inside the, da uh, the database actually requires re-indexing, which takes time, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, and you should really make sure that you monitor every variable, because uh, uh, out of the box, the, the cluster comes with a uh, like set of plugins that give you the current status. But the problem is that uh, you have to really uh, you have to store those uh, uh, store this data to actually uh, see if it's uh, good or bad because there later on in the future you can uh, check if it's uh, uh, if it's good or bad actually because uh, the quick di diagnostics of uh, of the cluster failure is crucial actually so uh, you should actually keep track of everything that's uh, going on. And uh, yeah, and we have some problems with memory leaks. Uh, I don't know exactly, it's nothing serious actually, but uh, 
uh, and they you know if they tend to say that uh, it's like memory leak free and it's, uh, it's tested and so on. We had some memory leaks which uh, require us to restart some nodes uh, every few months, but uh, it happens. So, uh, yeah, and the problem another is that uh, there is, uh, because the data is scattered like actually randomly around the, the cluster, you can uh, have situation when you have one node that is uh, more hot than the other ones. And it also can be a, like a performance drop because uh, uh, like 80 percent of the cluster is like idle. The, 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 the servers are doing nothing, and there's like one or two servers that are actually uh, over the capacity all, all the time. So uh, you should also take care of it. Yeah, I don't know if you actually are into Elasticsearch, but here are some uh, plugins that we actually use and recommend. Uh, uh, if you if you will run your own cluster, yeah, and here's like the thing about monitoring. So you don't ha you actually have to monitor not only the performance of the cluster, but actually combine it with all the data that you can have. So, for example, the typical uh, server data like CPU load, memory usage, network usage, and so on. And uh, uh, Actually, only then you can see if uh, something is going wrong. Because, for example, due to like network issues, everything start to uh, the performance is dropping constantly. But the uh, but the key like statistics of things that uh, you can assume that everything is fine, but actually it's not. Yeah, and here are, like the things that actually didn't work out for us because we're, uh, we've been running this uh, cluster for uh, like five years, so uh, I think we've seen like a lot of it that may or happen to, 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 to this technology. So uh, first thing is that uh, putting it in an unstable network or like uh, dividing the cluster into two geographical locations, it, uh, it works actually. So the cluster, you know, is alive when you do that, but you can have like really serious uh, performance issue when when you do this. So you should really uh, keep uh, keep the servers actually physically as close to each other as possible. Yeah, and uh, the other thing is that normally when you run uh, Java-based uh, applications and you occur this uh, heap problems. Like the natural choice is to just, yeah, just increase the heap and move along. Actually, in this case, it's not uh, uh, not a solution because uh, uh, after uh, some point, the, the performance actually drops because the server needs to have like half of the memory free to be used by file system cache. It's like an official recommendation from Lucene guys, and uh, uh, you cannot actually increase the heap uh, uh, constantly. Yeah, at the beginning we didn't actually monitor everything that we could, and we didn't uh, store it in the database. So uh, when we had some issues, the diagnostics took quite long, so uh, it was not actually good for us. And uh, at the beginning we didn't partition the data properly, because when you have uh, huge amounts of data, you really have to know what you are storing. So you have to divide this data into uh, indices that actually uh, optimize the, 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 the queries that you use. So uh, you don't actually want to, most of the queries uh, don't actually uh, hit uh, like uh, all the data actually uh, that we have. So uh, we, we use like a time, uh, time based uh, indices uh, inside uh, our cluster, which is like a common practice actually among uh, the uh, Solar and uh, Elasticsearch community. Yeah, and uh, at some points we decided to scale the cluster uh, vertically instead of horizontally, so we just thought that maybe we should have fewer servers but more powerful. It actually didn't make much sense because like of this memory and everything, and uh, to be honest, you uh, you get better performance out of the servers uh, that are like middleware, uh, because those high-performing uh, like servers with uh, 
like hundreds of gigabytes of uh, memory tends to be like really expensive. So it's better to have more servers uh, that are kind of like mediocre than uh, uh, than like some top edge uh, uh, top edge nodes. Yeah, and uh, uh, something that you want to also. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of like uh, practical information, like the default setting in Cassandra uh, may cause you to you know, uh, shut down actually after some time because uh, of the compaction strategy, but it also requires a lot of free space and if there's like a situation that it doesn't have enough of it, then it tries to, you know, again, 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 and the data is just growing because it's not compacted and after some time you just, I have this process that will never end and will, if you won't do anything, it will actually cause the whole cluster to shut down. So uh, you can actually change the compaction strategy to use, not to be better ones, but first you have to compact the data itself. So it's like a vicious circle of, uh, of compacting data. Yeah, okay, and here are some uh, technologies that we, we had experience with and we uh, eventually replaced them uh, over time. So uh, I don't think, uh, if you have any questions concerning them, you can uh, ask, them, uh, uh, ask me anytime, like uh, later in the coffee break. And uh, okay, so that's it. If you have, are there any questions actually? Do we have time for questions? Yeah. Okay. If there are any, so feel free to ask. <laughs> 